Hey, family. Thank you so much for tuning in to Our Roots Podcast with Joseph Babaifa, where only the strongest roots see the light. Brought to you by Botanica Candles and more. And if you haven't had the opportunity, please tap on that subscribe button and be sure to share this video. Today's episode is about El Egua, Ifa and El Egua. And once again, introducing my guest who has been on previous episodes, Babalawo Onishango, professional of Ifa, Mr. Luis Nieves Awo Ofungando. Thank you for coming back, Luis. Thank you for inviting me. Very pleased to be here. Very honored. Awesome. Well, when it comes to El Egua, um, we have to talk about him. Oh, he's the guy. He is the beginning, <laughs> right? And and when you talk about being Babalawo or Olorisha or even in any of the other traditions, he is an energy that is present across all faiths, whether they're African traditional indigenous or modern. There's always an Eshu character, and sometimes it gets confusing, right? But, right. um, you know, we really wanted to come out with this video because we have a lot of people that ask us, you know, what are the characteristics of the child of Elegua, right? So um, both of us have sons. Um, I also have a daughter that's a child of Elegua. So I'm going to go first and then I'll give it to you <laughs> to kind of go over these different characteristics. But, um, you know, one thing I notice about the children of Elegua is that they're underestimated. You know, most people won't see them coming. And that's where people kind of get this idea of Elegua as like a child, um, because, you know, when you look at a child, most of the time an adult, you know, someone that's not as savvy might overlook them because it's like, oh, it's a kid. You know, you really got nothing to worry about. But I think that's what makes them so spectacular, because most people might look at them, and, you know, disregard them, be like, oh, they're not a threat. And then they take advantage of that. Sometimes they don't even realize they're doing it and they just hit like a, a home run in whatever they're doing. I noticed with my Elegua children. Um, and blessings wherever they are right now, very talented people, very capable people, and they do it very discreetly, very humble people, gotcha. um, because people tend to underestimate them. Um, I've met very serious children of Elegua, but even them, their humor is dry. Like even unintentionally, they'll make you laugh or they'll, they'll set a trap for you, like not maliciously, but you'll be like, oh man, he took the keys or, you know, oh, my God, I left this at his house. Like, it's always, <laughs> like, a phenomenon with them. And it keeps things very lighthearted. Um, another thing is they're very emotional. Um, and you can kind of liken that maybe to that childlike energy. Um, but you definitely want to stay on the good side of the child of Elegua. Because if not, they turn into Eshu. That's right. Right? Um, very helpful. Very serving. Um, and, and very capable, but they do it in their own way. They don't really follow anybody else's processes. They really dance and walk to the beat of their own drum, and you got to leave them be because things work out for them in a way that might not work out for the rest of us. Gotcha. You know, you having children that are, uh, you know, followers and children of this energy, um, what have you noticed about the children of Elegua? Oh, <laughs> children of Elegua, um, are um, it's are very diverse. Um, the diversity that live within within them um, is very special, um, because this is an orisha that might have you trick for something, and 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 when you realize it's it's a whole different game, okay. And um, I've noticed uh, with with my own um, child, which is the son of Elegua. They're very talented people, uh, not show off until they have to or, or they are forced to, okay? Uh, they are very talented in, in arts, okay? He's a very good musician. Uh, they usually are very good musicians. I see. Or, or they have a talent that has to do with art because they are um, they're very um, diverse people. They are... Um, um, they are charismatic, diverse people, you know. So, children of Elegua, um, you can't force them to do nothing. 
no, no. That's one thing of children of like why you can't force them. Uh, they will do it at their own pace, at their own time, and whenever they want. One one very uh, very peculiar characteristic characteristic of a child of a legua is that um, they um, they will not pay attention to you at all when the conversation when they're not interested in the conversation. Not only that, you <laughs> think they're not paying attention sometimes, and they're hearing everything. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's it's really weird with them because like is he paying attention to me? Is he not? You know. You know it's 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 really weird because how the orisha uh, impersonates in 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 his children, you know, and um, these are people that they have children of, of Elegua have the best hearts. Oh yeah, a lot of heart, very they, emotional, like very said, emotional, yeah. very sentimental. Um, they are very caring about people. You know, and um, they will they will always be uh, looking out for you, even if you don't notice. Yeah, you know that's one thing I notice about about my kid. He will be always like on the look for me, and whenever I get home, my wife will say, "Hey, um, your son was asking for you. He was asking where you were, what you were doing, this and that." He will not tell to my face though. You know, he 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 will play cool. He was like, ah, I don't care. Yeah. You know, but after I leave, you know, he will be asking all the questions that yeah, he yeah, yeah. that he wants to know and more. You know, but yeah, there's people that um, they apparently don't pay attention. This is one of their virtues, but they are all in. You, it's kind of like when issues behind the door. You think you're getting, you're doing something, and nobody's watching, and. He'll capture it. He'll, capture he'll, it. He'll, he'll, he'll be a witness to it. So with them, you have to take them into account at all times um, because they're just very capable in that Gee. regard. And sometimes they're not even trying. That's the hilarious thing. I remember, like, my elders used to tell me, the son of Elegua does whatever he wants, you know, <laughs> and, and nothing happens, you know. So, And even more so than the sons of Shango or the children of Shango, like, there's no repercussions with them. They just kind of they do their yeah. thing, you know. But um, they do have an interesting mind because you spoke about art, right? When we talk about Eshu, Eshu is one of the constructors of the universe. He's the absence of light. And another thing with them is they have this thing where, you know, they carry the expanse of the universe in their head. You know, you hear so many people saying, no, you can't crown this Orisha because of this or this, that, the third. How are we able to crown Eshu then? Because you're literally putting <laughs> the mass of the universe and the cosmos in somebody's head. Ache. And that's why it's so important, um, especially in traditional practice, when you're identified as a follower of Eshu or from an Eshu clan, they try to give you Ori before you even go into priesthood. Because they said we need to fortify their spiritual head before we allow that medicine to go in. You know? So um, very important. And that's why they think differently. That's why they're such great artists. I know in the Odu of Obeche was where, you know, Eshu played instruments and things like that. And, you know, at least in Irete Suga, he was an artist. He was a potter. Irete Telu speaks of this as well. When yes. Eshu came by and, you know, this beautiful mural and he just like smeared it. And he was like, now, <laughs> like on, you know, some Picasso tip, like the abstract. And everybody was like, oh, that's amazing. And Orula was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, It was like, just go with it, you know. But um, it, it speaks of all that. A lot of people on the podcast have asked, you know, um, what is Eshu's role per se? And, you know, we've talked about so many different ones, but the big one that they keep asking about is, is Eshu the devil? And, you know, we see in uh, Nigeria now in traditional practice, you'll see the people with the Eshu is not Satan um, shirts. Um, you know, what do you feel? Like, is Eshu the devil? Is he not the devil? No, by any means, no. Um, Eshu, it's the um, regulator of the energy of the universe Ashe. in companion with Orumila. Ashe. Okay? Because <clears throat> Eshu, when Orodumare was creating the earth, um, he didn't have work to create, and the earth belonged to Eshu, but it was all dark, right? So Orodumare was, was looking for a place in which he can create the earth, and he looked down and was like, hey, that looks like a good place. But who is the owner? So he asked who was the owner of, of that piece of earth. And it was Eshu. And he asked Eshu, um, can I make my creation where you are? 
And he said, yes, you can make your creation here. I will not be a part of it, but I will influence it for good or bad. Bro. You know, so Eshu is, it, there's a misconception of Eshu with being the devil. You know, Eshu is the regulator of good and bad things in the universe. Because you can't have good without bad and bad without good. There's no way around it. You know, in order for good things to happen, bad things need to happen first. In order for you to laugh, you have to cry first. You cry because you want a house. You cry because you need a job. You cry because you want different things in life. You know, after you achieve what you're looking in life, which because which Eshu has to do a lot with achievements in life, mm -hmm. because he's the one who holds the keys to the different pathways in life. So after you achieve what you were looking for in life, happiness comes, <clears throat> and everything diversifies from good to bad or from bad to good. So I, actually, Eshu actually is like the police of the universe. He maintains the balance. <clears throat> he maintains the balance, and he will regulate people that are doing good, good and people that are doing bad. He will regulate things between these both energies. Absolutely. <clears throat> and <clears throat> my biggest thing is I don't feel like Eshu is evil. Because Not at all. <clears throat> if, if we're talking about maintaining a balance, it's like you said, there's actions and repercussions. Exactly. And that's just his job. I remember when we did the episode on Shango, you said when you're a king, you know, things have to be sacrificed right. for the greater good sometimes. And Eshu kind of has that same concept where it's like, uh, you know, you did this, you hurt this person, so now I have to do this to you. You know, or this is That's your right. karma. He's the distributor of karma, really. Really. Um, so it's it's not his fault. I mean, people have asked, you know, who is Olosing? And I've always defined Olosing as the owner of the left. And, you know, that kind of, you know, references, you know, Eshu is the leader of the Ajogun. He's the one who directs the Ajogun. So if you're doing something negative and your karmic debt is, I don't know, Aru or, or sickness, that's he's the one who goes like, all right, now you go. Gotcha. Right? And then, you know, people have also asked about Abida, right? Because in the Lugumi practice, we have this energy and, you know, it, it is the devil. But there's so many ways to interpret that. I mean, you know, who is Abida to you, really? Well, um let's let's start off with what the de what the word devil means mm -hmm. okay and the word devil uh means nothing more nothing less that he who knows how to do things in a certain way that will go unnoticed and or that will make his purpose no matter what by any means wow okay so and it's a, it's it's very it's very interesting because Satan and devil are two different things. Yes, they are. Okay, you can be a smart devil, okay, but then Satan, which means oppositor, is a different thing. Okay? Yeah. So uh, when when people resemble the word devil as being a beta, um, I I believe a beta it's a part of Osain, or it's a kind of Osain, mm -hmm. okay? Nothing to do with the devil, but the only thing that will will um, will resemble to this is that it will, it will bring back evil, or it will combat evil with evil. Mm -hmm. So the initiates in Abita, um, what they look is for protection from evil with evil, you know? So it's kind of like balancing things on the darker side, okay? Alosing is another thing, because alosing will be in, in a battle, mm -hmm. okay? But it will be kind of like the same thing. The it, same kind of archetype, energy, purpose. It's same energy, purpose, because you have you got to have evil to have good. Yeah, the balance. Yeah. You got to have the balance, because we, need, we live in a world in which we need a balance. We're not in heaven. If we were in heaven, we're a different thing. Yeah, yeah. But we live in a, in the real world in which we need a balance between evil and good. So Abita will resemble what what evil will pay off with the same evil back. It's fire with more fire. Fire with Resulting fire. Resulting in fire. It's it's like a karmic mm -hmm. 
uh, thing. If if I'm making myself clear, if I explain myself clearly, mm -hmm. um, it's a karmic, it's more of a karmic thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say you want to hurt somebody, and that person it's an initiating abita. That same hurt that you want to do, or, or that same damage you want to do to that person, is gonna come back at you. Absolutely, and that makes perfect sense because you know how intense that is. You know the people that have been able to interact with it, um, and then there's other people who interpret abita as shango. So it's a whole different thing. There's so many different ways. I've even heard people say, I mean, there's Orula, you know, so maybe all of them can manifest that energy per se, but, you know, it's more specific to, you know, what you're referring exactly. to. You Absolutely. Know. So it, it's interesting because people are always asking me about stories, right, about the child of Eregua and how they kind of, you know, get out of situations. Um, they really, they, they have a way of turning like travesty into triumph, you know, I'll share a story because it's it's one that we share with each other often and it's pretty hilarious, right? So one time someone told me they were at a drumming, right, at a tambor, and there was a guy there who was, uh, you know, a son of Elegua, and he comes down with Elegua, right? Um, so mind you, the tambor was packed, like a couple hundreds of people, like, you know, just real, like, saturated. And Elegua tells everybody, um, the police are coming, I'm leaving. And they were like, what are you talking about? So Elegua ran out of the house, right? And um, no one knew where he went. And the cops show up because they heard that the guy who had crowned Elegua was there and he had a warrant. <laughs> and no one knew this. And Elegua dipped, right? So the police were like, oh, where is he? We know he was here. And they were like, we don't know where he went, yo. And uh, the cops left and hours went by, hours went by, hours went by. And they said that El Egua, after the tambor closed and everything, came back to the owner and, like, se desmontó, and then he just went about his way. Oh. So it's just, it's crazy things like that. But, you know, I, I guess it wasn't his time to go to jail or, exactly. you know, it, it just wasn't his moment. So um, that's one story. And then um, another crazy story is, and I don't I don't think you were here for this one, but um, we're with a son of El Egua, right? And... Uh, you know, we're doing ceremonies for him, but we have to go to another house to finish. And, um, you know, in the Odu of, I think it's, it is, it's Otruponsa is one of them. Osatrupon speaks of it as well. And also in the Odu of Beka, right? Was where Orula left without performing Ebo. Okay. And Elegua was really frustrated with him because the Ebo was a rooster to him. But he loved Orula so much, he didn't want to see him get hurt because Orula didn't realize that on that trip, people knew he was going to go down that road and they were going to assault him. So Orula, uh, so Elegua was like, how do I influence destiny without breaking any rules? Because if the person doesn't do a boy, you're not supposed to help them. Okay. But him and him and Orula were like this. Orula was just a little disorganized. So Elegua, when Orula is about to make it to the point where he's about to get beat up, magically gives Orula the desire to use the bathroom gotcha. and Orula was like oye and he runs into the you know the forest to do his necessities and he took so long that the killers came out and said oh he must have you know he'll, he'll be here tomorrow and they left and um Orula comes back out and sees that like why he's like oh what are you doing here he's like no what are you doing here where's my rooster he's like no I'm gonna go make the money and come back and he said look at those guys over there they were gonna kill you and I had to save your life making you you know use the bathroom in the jungle Where's the prestige? And Orula quickly realized he had made a mistake, and he said, from this point forward, I'll always do my things before I travel. Before and then Legua said, mate vale. That's what you need okay. to do. But the point I'm going to with the story was, is ironically, in the middle of us going to our destination, the son of Legua we were with was like, oh, yeah, I got to use the bathroom now. And we're like, bro, we're on the expressway. You know, we're almost there. We're like, we were only like five, seven minutes away, Louis. And um, he was like, oye, oh boy, I'm going or I'm going? And this is a nice car. And we were like, <laughs> okay, pull off of the expressway, stop at the nearest Wawa. Um, he took his time. And we were like, okay, this puts an extra hour. Let me call my wife. Let me know I'm an extra hour outside of the house. And um, he gets back in, and we get back on the expressway. Horrible accident. Whoa. Horrible, horrible, horrible accident. Those hard things. Literally ambulances are showing up at the moment fire trucks i can tell you just by the way the cars were looking 
not a good finish for anybody that was involved. And we all kind of just looked at him because now they're taking us off the expressway again. And we had to look at him and be like, yo, you saved our life. You know, and these old dudes, it speaks of it. You know, I ask you this because have you had any crazy stories with El Agua? Have you had any crazy oh, stories with the children of Eshu? Most definitely, man. Um, those is one time I, I was supposed to take a plane, right? Oh, well. So this crazy thing happened at the airport. I was um, I was going through the checkpoint. And a guy was charging his laptop, and the laptop started, like, uh, getting up in smoke because it was overheated. Oh. He threw it. He threw the, the laptop with the bag with everything. Oh, Lord. And somebody yelled, bomb. Oh, God. <laughs> so you can imagine, this was um, 4 or 5 a.m., at Orlando International. Oh, no, no, no. On a Friday. It was packed. No, no, no. Like this. So everybody starts running to the nearest uh, emergency exit. And um, I had a problem. I had to travel, but um, it was a, it was not a non-planned travel. Mm -hmm. So I was actually traveling to Puerto Rico to bring my Santos to Florida. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'll see what I can do because I only have one bag paid for. I didn't have any money. And I was like, I'll see what I can do. But I had performed a ball before leaving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so everybody runs to the to the emergency exit. Uh, we're outside this and that. So I'm in the middle of this thing, and all of a sudden, I decide not to travel. Wow. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to travel. Um, I got my uh, divination chain, and I asked, and Orumira said, no. You're not, you're not supposed to travel today. And I was like, I couldn't understand it at first. So I called my wife and I say, hey, come pick me up at the airport. This and so and so and so happened. And I'm not going to be able to travel. And she's like, nah, get out of here. I just left you in the airport. And I'm like, nah, you got to come back. And um, so funny thing, I went back to my house. Next day. I called the airline and I'm like, hey, I couldn't travel yesterday. This and so and so and so happened at the airport. And they were like, oh, we apologize for that. We know what happened. Uh, our apologies to you, Mr. Nieves. Um, we're so sorry you couldn't travel, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're not going to, we're going to cancel your ticket, but we're going to give you a free ticket. And how many bags you want to carry with you? Oh, wow. So at first, I only had one bag paid for. I was not going to be able to bring everything that mm -hmm. I had to bring here to Florida. So now I had any bags that I wanted. And I say, no, no, just two check bags. That's it. So it, it, it was funny because I was supposed to travel. I was not going to be able to bring everything back. And this funny thing happened. So I, I had just it made sacrifice before I left the house. And this happened. So that's how how far Eshu or Elegua will go to show you that he's by your side and that he's willing to help you with your problem. He opened the path for him to be he able to come back path. over. I'm sure a couple of Eshus came over oh, on that trip. Oh, you know? all the Eshus came back. He doesn't stay behind. He's like, no, no hold on. Like, no, I was like, yeah, you're going to be the first one on the seat. <laughs> and, it, and it's always some crazy random occurrence. Like, it's to the point where... Like, I'll just be, because, you know, when you're in this, you start noticing things more. Where the random person will be like, oh, you know, a, a random laptop, you know, that's on fire. Or, you know, we, you have to observe nature. Gotcha. You have to observe what nature is saying to you, whether it's an omen, whether it's an animal, whether it's an occurrence. You have to know when, like, that's not normal. That's, like, phenomenal. You know, you have to pay attention to that because that means the energy is, like, all over the place. Sometimes it works out fine. Sometimes you have to pull out the opele and be like, Am I doing the right thing here or not? And that's what it's really for. Gotcha. Luis, when we're here at the Botanica, a lot of people come in because they're learning about Ifa and Orisha and they want to pay homage to the Orishas, right? Sometimes even before they've received them. And the big guy is Eshu. Everybody wants an Eshu altar, right? And they ask us, you know, how do we construct it? You know, how do we feel about it? Um, 
we the first thing we tell them is why don't you just receive issue okay. rather than getting a bunch of things together to manifest issue um but i want to ask you you know how negative can it be for someone to set up like an issue area without actually having gone through the proper processes oh really negative and and what are some of the symptoms like what are the things that can start occurring well some of the symptoms you're going to start having problems at work you don't have uh uh, marital problems, um, problems with your children. And um, reason for being is that you're calling an energy that you're not ready for. Um, exactly, exactly. This is, this is a very, very big taboo that people are committing these days. Okay? People are, are putting up altars, uh, are, you know, putting up issues. They go uh, somewhere. They buy an etch. They're mounting their own issues. They're mounting their own issues. Uh, they put whatever uh, there's um, there's available to their hands in it, and it's not how it works, okay? Because your issue has more than a hundred different pathways, okay? He, he diversifies because issue is the master uh, diversifier of the universe. The shapeshifter. She's the sh he's the shapeshifter. He can he can uh, shift into a dog, into a cat, into a bird, into a woman, uh, into a beggar, into a man, into a child. That's in the that's in the audio of Kumbe Durao La Rufa would start like freaking out. He would start changing and deceiving people. Start changing forms. Mm -hmm. And and this is what some people don't realize when they um when they call energy that they are not prepared for. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of bad things come your way. You know, this it's it's not a game. Some people might think it's a game. Oh, I'm just going to put this in this corner. I'm going to light up a candle. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a sacrifice of this or that. And they're not realizing that they are only setting up for failure. Absolutely. You know? And it's, the thing is, is when you look at the issue icon, it's nothing more than a house for that energy. It's Ache. a place where it can rest. And Ache. then the reason it's able to rest there calmly is because of the blood. Ache. In the Odu Yekumbe Dura, when blood wasn't on Eshu, he would start freaking out start and shape-shifting and making things happen. And um, that's why we have to put the palm oil to replace the blood because Eshu wants to eat every day. Ache. If it was up to him, ungayo at the rooster a day, whatever it is. Never not hungry. We don't have time for that. Exactly. You know, businesses, work, family, you know, this is why you need the proper things. Because if not, this will turn your house upside down. Gotcha. You know. Um, it's a very strong energy. No, the strongest. I mean, without issue, there's nothing. There's nothing you know? in the universe. Now, in your opinion, who gives issue and who gives elegua? Well, issue, okay. When you, when you talk about elegua, Elegua has 21 different pathways. The Orisha aspect. The Orisha mm -hmm. aspect of Eshu is Elegua, okay, which um, most likely will represent Eshu's wife at a certain point, but it's not just a feminine uh, energy at all, okay? In in some in some pathways, it will be a feminine energy. It's a duality. It's a duality, okay? So Elegua, which has 20, 21 different pathways, uh, will be um, uh, consecrated by olorichas. Okay, Eshu, on the other hand, has has more than a hundred pathways. Will be consecrated by a, by an awo urumila, mm -hmm. and the reason for being is because we need to put into this a lot of work of forces of nature to be able to make it manifest the energy that that. The specific energy that that person that's coming to be initiated needs in his or her life. That's the reason why, because Eshu couldn't comply with all the demand of the sacrifices. Ache. And he had to diversify in the Odun Obeunle. Ache. He had to diversify into a hundred or more pathways to be able to to carry all the sacrifices that humanity was asking for him. That's what you have an issue that lives in the hill, an issue that lives in the ocean, an issue that lives in the river, an issue that lives in the four corners. He's omnipresent. He has to be everywhere. He has to be everywhere. Everywhere they need him. They need him everywhere. They need him everywhere. And, and everywhere is needed because everywhere you go, 
there has to be a balance of energy which Eshu provides. I see. So I couldn't agree any more with you. Now, a lot of people ask me, where does Eshu live? Right? Does he live inside? Does he live outside? Does he live in the door? Does he live in the back door? We're going to get into a couple old dudes that kind of stipulate where Eshu can go. Not where he has to go, but where he can go to where it's not interrupting your life. So okay. does Eshu go by the door? Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Because if you look at old dudes like Iwori Meji, mm. Okana Yekung, and Osala Fobeo, or Barabobe as well, it speaks of how Eshu is the one who is the guardian of the town. Who's the one? He's kind of like the toll booth. Okay. You know, you got to get screened beforehand. Um, another interpretation of this was in Iwori Meji was where Orumila's children mistreated him. And because of it, he went to heaven. And he told Eshu, if anybody tries to come in my home, let me know to see if I want them in here or not. When Orumila's sons, after disrespecting him, went looking for him to apologize, Eshu was at the door. It was Eshu on the bode. Okay. Right? And they were like, we want to see our father. He said, hold on. Let me talk to him. He said, Orula, your sons are here. The Babalabos are here. He said, I don't want to see them, but give them the message that they can interact with me through the materials that I left on earth. But mm -hmm. please do not let them in my house. And he went outside and, you know, he said, Orula accepts your apology, but he doesn't want you in his home. You can find him with those sacred materials and interact with him on that level. That's right? right. So that's why I say Eshu goes at the door. Now, does he go inside or outside? Here we go, right? <laughs> um, in the culture that we live in, you might not be able to have an issue right there at the front door. Let's say you live in an area where Ifa or Odisha is not known or accepted. If they see an issue at your door, they might call the HOA. Okay. Uh, they might call the police, you know, because <clears throat> it, it, it can be gruesome to the untrained eye. Right. So that's why Eshu made his way into the house, but always near the front door in a place where he wasn't able to cause havoc. Um, you know, does he live outside? Ideally, yes, but at the same time, for the reasons that we just spoke about, might not be a possibility, right? Sure. Um, but, you know, the Oduo Truponka speaks of this as well, why Eshu goes inside, outside, etc. cetera. Um, more outside, of course, um, because Obadala kicked him out of the house because he was misbehaving with his kids. Um, in your experience, I mean, which, I mean, we've seen both, obviously, just being Nukumi practitioners. What have you noticed, like, people who have Eshu in the house, like, in a part that's a little too intimate? Like, like people who have it in their bedroom or people, because some people, they, they don't like to, you know, set limits and boundaries. I mean, have you noticed that those people, you know, what are their results like? Well, in in in, in the Ondo Ohani Iwori, Ohani Danchela, okay. Eshu. And we're speaking out of necessity, by the way. It's not the people that, of course, like, if you need to have it there, hey, I'm talking about those there, that have options. You know, yeah. if you have options, I will say, don't put it in the bedroom. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, because two things. In the only one, Juani Tanchera, or Juani Wori, was when Echu was cut off because people was naked in front of him. Oh, wow. Okay? So, um, Echu does not like to see naked people. Um, because remember, this energy resembles of a child. Correct. Okay. You know, innocence. Innocence. You know, you don't want to break that innocence. You know, Eshu will be scared off if he will see somebody naked. You know, number one. Number two, uh, Eshu, it's a warrior. You can't keep him contained inside a room. I see. Okay. We have to keep him behind doors. Reason for being is because we did, we live in a new world. We live in the world in which, you know, everything is uh, subdivision. Well, in Cuba, in Cuba, and in, in, in the Caribbean, <clears throat> it's Solal, <throat> or the Caserio, like yeah. everything was, you had a, you had an apartment. You, you know, exactly. you, you lived with everybody, so you had to keep your things contained. You had to keep your things contained mm -hmm. because you, you can't be exposed. Somebody's stealing your stuff, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, ideally, he will live outside. All the waters, energy, each. It, it ideally live outside, mm -hmm. you know, where it's El Legua, or Gung, or Chelsea, or Sun, uh, even Shango, mm -hmm. you know, ideally will live outside. But, but you know, we we can't have, you know, we can't have any subdivision or, or altar, an altar in front of the house. You know, yeah. it's, not, it's just not going to be possible. But, you know, um, here's one thing that I've seen is people uh, maybe 
putting Eshu or the warriors inside a cabinet. Yeah, it's something to uh, give them the space so that, you know, they, it's identified. Exactly. It's not just open where they're able to flow. Exactly. And reason for being is because sometimes we need a little privacy, religious privacy. Oh, yeah. You know, because, you know, it's... it's uh, you might have a visitor or a client. A visitor you know? or a client is a religion that's not well looked at the eye of some people. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's nothing more, nothing less that, that out of necessity. Correct. Okay, now if you have the facility, you have a farm, and, and you, have you have options. You know, you got options. You got five acres. You know, you can, you can, you have a, the gate is a mile away from mm -hmm. the property. You know, I don't see why not. You, mm -hmm. you can keep him outside and you know, feed him outside and make all the offerings outside because that's where he's gonna receive it, the best in the best way. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, it's it's like you were talking about the warrior energy, the, the just them being very open, very, you know, sabaje. Yeah. You know, they need that space to be able to express themselves. They can be contained. The hunters, the warriors, et cetera. And that's really going to lead us into our next point because people, you know, there's sons of Elegua out there um, that might be interested, um, you know, in doing Ifa and things like that. And um, an Odu that speaks about why the warriors go outside as well, and that kind of touches on the crowning, washing, yes or no, is Osala Fobeo. Right? And um, people ask, you know, do the children of Elegua, before doing Ifa, have to crown? So um, there's a couple patagis on this, you know. And when we look at Osala Fobeo, Osala Fobeo says the children of the warriors have a natural path to not have to crown Mache. before initiating into Ifa, right? Because... Mm -hmm. That sign was where the warriors helped Orula find his missing tools that Obatala had taken. And because of their loyalty to Orula, Obatala kicked them out of the room of Orisha. And Orula said, don't worry about it. I'm going to take them to be Baalaos anyway so they don't have to deal with you. Achei. Right? So that's one point. And then there's also an Odu known as Ikabemi that speaks of when Elegua and Yemaya were married. Right? But Yemaya wanted Orum, eh, Eshu to be an Olorisha or an Oriate, because that was her thing. But Elegua was like, I want to be a Babalao. So when he went and spoke to Orula, Orula said, you don't have to do that before coming with me. Now, whatever your wife says, I don't have nothing to do with that. And when Elegua chose to wash and do Ifa rather than crown, him and Yemaya separated. That's right? right. So I ask you in your experience, because we've interacted with so many Babalaos and brothers at this point, do you feel like the people who have washed the warriors, specifically Eshu, and then did Ifa, have they done okay? I think they have done okay. Uh, I have seen a lot of people done okay with washing uh, warrior and doing Ifa. Mm -hmm. And um, here's here's the thing. Um, warriors' children, when they crown Orisha, usually it sets them back an extra step yeah to to yeah to to become a babalao it's not impossible but i can i can i can assure you almost every child of a warrior of uh almost every child of a legua or goon or chosi that i have uh, known that have crowned orisha uh have had difficulties uh, coming into Ifa. And these Odus are speaking of why. You know, it's not that you can't, you just have to be prepared for what could come. Exactly. Yeah. For the for the setbacks, because you're gonna have a lot of setbacks because these orichas, you know, when when going to through Ifa didn't have to crown. So by you crowning them, you're putting you're adding up an extra energy that's gonna cause you setbacks. Especially if they're not meant for it. Exactly. You know, like Especially if the guy if isn't like Ayobe, you know, if you're Ayobe, you might want to consider doing Orisha. Achei. But if you have a son of like Eshu with Ikabemi or Salafobeo or Obetwa. I will say wash you know, and go straight to Ifa. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's the best way to go definitely to my experience. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people ask as well, a lot of guys, they ask, should the son of Elegua do Ifa? My opinion is this. If you like Ifa and you have all the criteria to do Ifa, you should do Ifa. You should do it. Because there's nothing interrupting you. Now, is every son of Elegua meant to do Ifa? Of course of not. Of course not. But if you should and you can, why not? There is no impediment because there are people who say, no, the son of Elegua, Ifa, no. 
And, you know, you look at various odd dudes because in Osala Fobeo is where El Eguade de Fa, you know, and there's various Iwodiwobe speaks of it. Um, you know, we can go on and on and on. Eyobe. Many odd dudes. Oh, man. He was, he, he was one of the first. He had to be because without Eshu, Orula doesn't function. So he's like, I need to do Ifa to this guy because with I need him for everything. I need so for I him. might as well bring him in so we can work together, you know? Let me tell you something. My T-shirt, my Ifa T-shirt, my Baba Ifa, has crown a legua. Mm -hmm. And my Oluo Siwayu has crown a legua mm -hmm. as well. You know, and they're excellent Baba Lawas. Yeah, and your Yubona is sabio. He knows. Yeah. He knows, you he know, knows tremendous Ifa. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, and, and you know, they, they they are very talented within the Ifa practice. Okay? They they have a very good Ashe for Ifa. And honestly, you know, I don't see why a, a, a shell of a leg will not uh, be able to make Ifa. And be good at it. Be good at it because uh, uh, one of the best Babalabos that I know are, are, are childs of a leg or children of a leg You know, so they have very good, um, very good uh, faculties within Ifa. Boy, boy, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And, um, a lot of people, they, because when, when we did the uh, the Orula episode with um, La Regla de Ifai Ocha with uh, Schubert or Dileke, in regards to Schubert, um, you know, we touched on why Orumila is the one who identifies the guardian Orisha within the Lukumi practice, right? So we talked about why Orula is the one that should. But some people say, well, why can't Eleguaz Cowries? or someone's guardian or Isha Kauri's not be able to do the same thing. So now we're going to delve into that, right? Um, in the Odu of Iroso Umbo was where it speaks of Elegua with divine, right? Whether it was with the Dilogun or whether it was with the Opele. <clears throat> what happened here was, is that when Elegua became Olorisha or Babalawo, he would read the oracle backwards okay. because he wouldn't listen to his elders or go through the apprenticeship to finish learning how to do them properly. So Orula, hearing this about his godson, went looking to confirm, but he went disguised. So he sat down in front of however you want to look at it, whether it was the chain, whether it was the shell, and he noticed that Legua was reading the oracle backwards and completely destroying people's lives. Okay. Orula revealed himself, Elegua was shocked, and he said, give me that. You are not allowed to throw the chain until you learn how to use it, and your shell cannot be used for critical things, right? Um, and that's why the Dilogun, as such, any of them, but especially Eleguas, cannot be used to identify those things, right? And another thing is the Dilogun is a very spiritual oracle. It picks up energy. Okay. It's not like Orula. Orula is very bland. Orula doesn't let anything influence him. The Dilogun belongs to so many different Orishas, anybody can come through there energetically. Okay. But Orula, no, because the only one that speaks through there is Olodumare. Is Olodumare. Okay? So how do you feel about this as far as the Caracol and, you know, it being used for said process? In the Odun Osairos, um, Ashe, the same one, the same one that we mentioned, yeah. Ashe, you know, in the other one, I also um, was when this issue was resolved, and it was actually resolved by Shango, correct? Because Obatala had a lot of godchildren. <laughs> yes, he did. And you know, and every time a person went to Obatala's house, he will make divination with the cowrie shells. And he will determine that he, he, the person was his or her child. Uh, he, it was his child or, or it was his, uh, uh, his daughter, you know. And um, Shango started noticing and he, he spoke with the other Orishas. He was like, hey, have you noticed something very funny? And have you not noticed this? And they'll say, what, what, what's wrong, Shango? And he will say, uh, Batala has so many children. What about us? We have nobody. We have nobody. What, <laughs> what's what's going on? Everybody so, takes the chief out of his house, but I haven't had a ram in a year. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's something's not right. So 
they make they make a reunion and they go all of the mud and they say, Father, we need to know what's going on because of Badala is having all 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 people, all children are going to his house and we don't have any children. And we 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 feel like we we need to have children. We deserve to have children as well. So Odumare, uh, s- s- wise as he always is, he said, "Let's call Orumila to make a resolution here. Let's call Obatala to ask what's going on." When Obatala arrived, they asked him why was this happening. He said, "Well, uh, I don't know." And they asked, how are you determining, or how are you coming to a determination that these people are your children? It was, I, I will use my cowrie shells and ask, you know. And um, that's when Shango started getting angry. And like, ah, he's, he's cheating on people. He's manipulating. He's manipulating it. the cowrie shells. So Orumila, with his savvy, he said, hey, let's, let's uh, resolve this in a friendly way. He said, um, okay. So how are we gonna solve this, okay? And all of them might have said, okay, from now on, everybody that wants to know his or her orisha, guardian orisha, will have to go to Orumila and Toi Bangeshu. Because he doesn't care. It doesn't matter. It's it not that he doesn't matter. care, it's just that he has no desire one no way desire. or the other. Exactly. So, and from that point on, everything was made through Ifa or through Orumila to determine a person's guardian angel because yeah. the cowrie shells. Let's say, for example, let's let's um, let's not say Obatala. Let's say a Santera. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Let's let's use the oh yeah cowrie shells to determine that person. That person is more than likely going to come out of Chalo Boya. Going to come out Chalo Boya because you're making a divination with the cowrie shells of Oya. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it it would only make sense, but not in King. No, Inking is not influenced. Inking is inf- not, not influenced by any Orisha. Only because Inking or Ifa is the word that comes out of the out of the mouth of Olop Dumari. I see. Perfect. And, you know, you talk about Orula and you talk about Eshu. These guys were inseparable. Um, <clears throat> you know, Excuse whether it was Elegua saving Orula in the forest um, all of these different things, but I, I want to think. I want to bring things full circle to kind of touch on that relationship. There's a patagi in the Odu of Iwuriwoka, right, where Urumila performed divination and this sign was revealed, where Ifa told him to fake his death to see who was who and what was what. And Orula thought it was pretty nonsensical because he's like, everybody loves me, right? But he did it. He faked his death. And when he was sitting in the casket, a lot of people came, a lot of people. And he was expecting people to say good things in front of his dead body. And everybody that came by said horrible things. They were like, oh, that's why I never paid you your $20. I was waiting for you to die. <laughs> oh, you know, you stupid. We hated you. That's why we didn't invite you to the santo to do the matanza. Or that's why we didn't take our god kids to you for, you know, whatever. And Orula... Little by little, began to realize why Ifa wanted him to do this. And no one was crying. But the last person to show up at the casket was Eshu. And Orula was like, man, I don't know if I can handle another betrayal. And Elegua, when he got to the casket, started bawling, crying. Bawling, crying. Just crying, crying. He said, my brother, my friend, how could this happen? How could I let this happen? I can't live without you. You're, 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 I'll take care of your family, your children, your wife. Just the most beautiful, by a eulogy that inc- incomparable. And Orula said, this was my only friend, and he was the one I paid attention to the least. Okay. Orula hopped out of the casket. Or some people had a heart attack. People were like, oh, my God. He said, thank-. He's alive. <laughs> he said, thank you for letting me know what I really meant to you guys. He looked at Elegua, he kissed him on the cheek, he hugged him, he said, thank you for your loyalty. Thank Achei. you for your love. For people to get to me, they have to go through you first. Achei. We will never be separated. You're, you're everything to me. How much has Elegua helped you in your religious career? What has he been able to resolve? Oh my gosh, that's a big question. He makes, he makes the impossible happen. Bro. Oh man. Um, 
I have I I have so many memories of, and the first thing I received was etu. Yeah, um, was given to me to my by my godfather Ifa godfather, and I remember people used to look at me like I was crazy. I was at a point in which I wanted to make a change in my life. Um, I lost a lot of friends because of this. Because I wanted to change my life for good. So a lot of people turned their backs on me. Um, I remember I had a pickup truck. And every morning um, when I was going to work, because I used to work near the beach. And my Eshu is the Eshu that, that walks with Jemaya. Nice. So I remember every morning... I used to get into the pickup truck and we'll put Eshu in the passenger seat. <laughs> nice. I was a driver to work, right? So every time I went to lunch, I went to the beach and I took him to the beach. And I used to take my shoes off and play with him in, in you know, in shallow waters. You lived you lived on Juanita and Chile and oh, that deal. People will look at me like this guy is out there. Tacho. And you know, Tacho. And this this helped me so much um, realizing that one of the only friends that I had, now I have a lot of friends because all the Orishas are my friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But by that time, you know, I was not initiated in Orisha. Um, I was I was not a Babalawo. All I had was Eshu, the Warriors, and Orula, you know. And... Um, I used to do this all the time, and I was I used to put a part of my lunch to Echu um, when I was in my lunch break. And, you know, this this built me up so much and showed me so much how the Orishas were there for me, starting off with Echu, that, you know, I, I got to tell you, nowadays he's, he's one of my best friends. I will speak anything to him. Nobody will be there. You think nobody's listening, and then, then you go out on the road and you see things happen, and you're like, oh, no. Iwariwoka says it. The Baalao's best friend is Eshu. The guy was there listening to me the whole time. And here's here's one one um, very interesting about Eshu. Eshu, when you when you ask Eshu for, for a change in your life, Eshu will break everything down into pieces. Yeah. And you'll be like, what happened? I asked Eshu for, for a job. I asked Eshu for a house. I asked Eshu for a spouse. And you will notice whenever Eshu is trying to build up your life, he will burn everything that's old down. He has to. He has he to will make live room. It, yeah. He will leave it into ashes. And then in the ashes of that that good life that you had, he will start building up the things that he wants for you. This is very, very peculiar about Eshu. He this is his peculiarity. It's monumental. Yeah. It has to be big. You know, yeah. some of that is spoken about in Okanamei, where you ask Eshu for one thing and you think he's giving you the opposite, but he's giving you exactly he's what you exactly want. Exactly what you want. What you need, you know? No, no. I would say, me personally, um, this Orisha to me, um, based on my Odu of Ileta Suga, is second to none. Okay. I would go as far to say um, I have not fallen within my religious career because of this That's Orisha. When you look at the role that Eshu played in Ileta Suga, um, where Obatala blessed him and said, You're for the good and for the, for bad. the bad. Whatever you need, whatever, like Obatala said, whatever I need you for, I know I'll get it. And then Legua said, I'm here for whatever. I go as far to say Eshu is the reason I'm still standing. Okay. That's how much me and that guy, like, I was homeless with my Eshu. Okay. I slept in a closet with that Eshu. That Eshu lived, he laid next to my head in a box, you know? So it's things like that that just build that relationship. And, you know, I really, I give all the credit to him. And I, I'm not afraid to say it because I know at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. He's still going to handle it. Okay. You know, the way I work with him, the way we interact, 
He protects my family. He protects me. He protects my loved ones, my brothers, and he does not let you fall. Okay. So I stick to what I say at every plante. As long as you take care of Eshu, things won't get worse. Okay. Right? His friends are those that feed him. His enemies are those that are able to watch him starve, you know? Luis, this has been fabulous. Fantastic. You know, and and Eshu, man, the, the he will turn into anything, anything and into everything. He will destroy everything that's not good for you. And he will build up everything that's meant for you. Thank you so much for being here again. Thank you for inviting me. Love you dearly. Very pleased to hear you. <laughs> Love you too. Family, <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. A couple of things I want to mention before we um, separate once again until next time. If you like these shirts, if you're interested in Our Roots merchandise or Botanica Candles and more products, please visit the website, spiritual mentorship programs, consultations, IFA classes, etc. cetera. Um, please, if you haven't had the opportunity, subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it, and let us know what you think in the comments. By IFA, we're only the strongest roots see the light, brought to you by Botanica Candles and more. I want to say until next time, see the light. Okay.